My name is Kishwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 160 and 161. Problem number 160, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? We are told that five times A's age, we have two people, A and B, five times A's age exceeds B's age by five years. That's going to be our first equation. That, that statement will, gen, will, will, will generate our first equation. Then they go on to tell us that and one-tenth of B's age, one-tenth of B's is less than A's age by four years. Our job is to find their ages, age of A and age of B. Let's do it, shall we? So let's begin. Five times A's age. Now A, of course, is being used as a person's name, but we're also going to use the same variable to represent their ages. So don't get confused. A represents A's age. So it's the same variable. Technically, I shouldn't be doing that, but that's okay. So, 5 times A, which is means 5 times A, exceeds B's age by 5 years. Exceeds B's age by 5 years. So here is B's age. Is this equation correct? This, this equation, the way it's written, it says that 5 times A's age equals B's age. Is that what it says here? No, it does not. It says 5 times age is exceeds B's age by 5 years. In other words, this quantity exceeds that quantity by 5. There are two ways we can fix this thing. Since this quantity exceeds that quantity by 5, we cannot put an equal sign. If we want to put an equal sign, the only way we can justify putting an equal sign is if we were to add 5 to this quantity, b, because this exceeds b by 5. So by adding b to 5, now they are equal. Or, another way we can represent this concept is to take this quantity 5 times a is h, which we know exceeds b just by 5 years. Since this exceeds by 5, take away 5 from it. There you go. Now, this quantity 5 times a is h, when you take away 5 from it, it equals b is h. Then they go on to tell us that 1 tenth of b is h, 1 tenth of b is h will be b over 10, is less than a by 4, is less than a by 4. Is that what they tell us? One tenth of B is age, this says, this quantity, this thing says, one tenth of B is age equals A is age. That's not what it says. It says one tenth of B is age is less than A is by how many? By four years. This quantity, this quantity is less than A's age by four years. In other words, if we were to take this quantity and add four to it, because it's four less than that quantity, it should equal A. Those are our two equations, that's what we have to work with, so let's get going, okay? Enough of the talk. Very first thing we want to do is get rid of this 10 from the bottom, multiply both sides of this equation by 10. Multiply this equation by 10, both sides, so that we can get rid of this 10 from here, and we'll end up with b here, and this will be 10 times 4, which is 40, which equals 10a. Subtract 40 from both sides. If we subtract 40 from both sides, that tells us that b equals... 10a minus 40. This equation tells us that b, b's age equals 10, it should be 10a, not 10. 10a minus 40. b's age must equal 10 times age is minus 40. Here we know b's age is 5 times a minus 5. Since this equals, this, this quantity equals b, and that quantity equals b, that means this right here, if we were to combine the two together, 5a minus 5, 5a minus 5 must equal 10a minus 40, this quantity right here. Bring our a's on one side, numbers on the other side, so let's subtract 5 from 5a from both sides. We subtract 5a from both sides and add 40 to both sides. And we are done. Positive 5a and negative 5a, they're going to cancel out. Negative 5 and a positive 40 is going to give us 35. Positive 10 and negative positive 10a and a negative 5a is going to give us 5a and negative 40 and a positive 40 is going to cancel out. 5a equals 35, which means a must equal 7 because 7 fives are 35. Now we know a is h, we can figure out b is h from either there or there. It doesn't really matter. Let's do it here because it's easier to continue here. 
So now that we know A is h, which is 7, B is h must be 10 times 7, which is 70, minus 40, which is 30. There we go. Let's do one more, shall we? 161. 161. Is one ninth of B's age one sixty one one ninth of by the way ninth this is nine but ninth doesn't have an E in it that's the correct spelling one ninth of B's age One ninth of B's age is greater by one year than one seventh of A's age. That's the first statement. Comma. And that's going to give us one equation. That's that's one equation right there. Then they go on to tell us. And and twice A is H, twice A is H is equal to, is equal to what, we need the room obviously, what B will be in 11 years time. Again, find their ages. Find their ages. Let's erase all of this thing, we need the room. So, let's understand what they're talking about here. One ninth of B is age. One ninth of B is H, so it's just B over nine. One ninth of B is H, that's that, is greater is greater by one year than one seventh of A is. One seventh of A is would be A over seven. The way we wrote here, what this says is that one ninth of B is H is equal to one seventh of A is H. Is that what it says here? That's not what it says here. It says one ninth of B is H is greater is greater, this quantity here, one ninth of B's age, is greater than one seventh of A's age. By how many years? By one year. One ninth of B's age is greater by one year. If it's greater by one year, then if you were to subtract one from it, they should be equal to each other. That's our first equation. Then they go on to tell us that twice of A's age, twice of A's which is two times A, is equal to, is equal to, what is equal to what B will be in 11, in 11 years time. Well B's age, B's current age, B's age today is what we are representing with letter B. B. Again B happens to be his name and we are using the same letter to represent numerical value, his age. This is how old he is today. This is how many years old he is today. In 11 years time, if he's, this is how old he is today, then 11 years from now, in 11 years time, whatever this quantity is, B is going to be 11 more than that. And at that point, 11, 11 years from now, whatever that his age happens to be, at that point, whatever that age is, we are told that twice A is age, not 11 years from now, this is kind of a little bit tricky, do you understand? Whatever, whatever the A's age is today, twice that amount is equal to what B's age will be 11 years from now. So we are here, we are comparing two quantities, from two different time period. Two times how old A is today equals what B will be 11 years from now. So 11 years from now B will be this. Now see this is the toughest part, the rest is very simple. Let's see what we can do here. Let's, let's get rid of this denominator here, 7 and 9 and 7. Let's multiply this entire equation. Let's multiply this entire equation by the common denominator would be here 
It's 9 times 7, which is 63. So let's multiply this by 63. I'm going to rewrite this thing. Minus 1 equals a over 7. We, now, we want to make the entire equation uh, with the denominator of 63. We can do that by multiplying this quantity by 7 over 7. Multiplying this quantity by 63 over 63. Or, or if you like, multiplying this quantity 1 by 7 times 9 over 7 times 9. And multiplying this quantity by 9 over 9. You see, we're not changing anything. Multiplying a over 7 times 9 over 9. 9 over 9 is 1. 9 over 9 is 1. It doesn't change anything. What do we end up here? 63, 63, 63. They have the same common denominator. Now the denominator no longer plays any role. So we end up with 7 times b, which is 7b, minus 1 times 7 times 9, which is 63, equals 9 times a. Now let's see what we get here. Here we have a 9a, here we have a 2a, here we have a 7b, this is tricky. Oh, there we go, 7b. You see, if you were to try to, if you were to, try to make the denom if you were to try to make the coefficient of a, same for both equations, listen carefully, if you were to try to make the coefficient of a the same for both equations, then we would have, we would have had to multiply this equation by 2 to make 9 times 2, 18, and we would have had to multiply this equation by 9, 9 times 2 is 18. We would have ended up doing twice the work. Let's not do that. We have, a, we have a 7b here, we have only 1b here. Why don't we multiply this equation by 7? Let's multiply this equation by 7. Times 7, times 7, okay? I'm going to put this demarcation in a different color so that, so that we don't confuse the two. There. So here we have 7 times 2, which is 14a equals b plus 11 times 7. Did I, did I mess up? Ah, Jesus. We have to put the parenthesis here. You see, this is how people make boo-boo. I was too busy yapping. When you multiply this equation by 7, the proper thing would have been to put the parenthesis first and then multiply it by 7. That way I would not have done the silly stupid thing that I just did. I forgot to multiply b by 7. Which of course, which of course I would have caught myself because that was the whole bloody point of doing this thing here so that b had the same coefficient. We would have caught ourselves in, in, eventually, but it was a damn silly thing to do. And 11 times 7 is 77. Let's solve this thing for, for 7b. Let's solve this thing for 7b. So 7b equals 14a. Bring the 77 to here. And let's solve this equation for 7b. So 7b equals 9a. Bring 63 to this side. So here my handwriting is getting lousy. So I, sh I should say lousy here because it's always lousy. So now here we have 7b, here we have 7b, which means this quantity has to equal that quantity. Let's do it on the top. So 9a plus 63, 9a plus 63, this quantity must equal this quantity, because they are both equal to 7b. 14a minus 77. You can pick up speed. Let's subtract 9a from both sides. And let's bring 77 to this side. So positive 9a and negative 9a is going to cancel out. Positive 9a and negative 9a is going to cancel out. Negative 77 and positive 77. See, negative and positive they're going to cancel out. Here we end up with 63 plus 77, which is 3 plus 7 is 10, which is 0. Carry 1, we have 140. And here we get 14 minus 9. 14 minus 9 is 5a. 14 minus 9 is 5a, divide both sides by 5. And what do you suppose we're going to get? What do you suppose we're going to get? 140 divided by 10, 140 divided by 10 would have been 14. If 140 divided by 10 is 14, then 140 divided by 5 should be 28, which is our a. Which is our a. And if you didn't like, if you didn't like what I just did here, you could divide 140 by 5. It's very simple. Divide 140 by 5, there's nothing to it. How do we do it? How many, how many 5's does 1 have? 1 has no 5's. 1 has no 5, then 1 goes and joins the 4, becomes 14. How many 5 does 14 have? 14 has 2 5's. 2 5's are 10. 2 5's are 10. 
The remaining 4 goes and joins to 0 and becomes 40. The remaining 4 goes to 0 and becomes 40. And how many 5s does 40 have? 40 has 8 5s. There we go, 28. Once we have the value of A, we can figure out the value of B for, by using either of this equation here. It really doesn't matter which equation. Right here, 7B. Let's, do, let's work with that one. Ah, but just tell you what. We're not going to work with this equation because this is a large number, so let's work with this equation, because if we divide this entire equation by 7, we end up with this. Let's, let's divide this entire equation by 7. If we divide this entire equation by 7, we get b equals 14a divided by 7 would be 2a, minus 77 divided by 7 is 11. And now put in there, value of a, a was 28. So 2 times 28 minus 11. How much is 2 times 28? Well, 2 times 25 is 50, isn't it? 2 times 25 is 50, which means 28 times 2 must be 56. 56 minus 11, 56 minus 11, 56 minus 10 would have been 46, which means it's 45. B is 45 years old. B is 45 years old and A is 28 years old is what we find. Bye now.